Just trying to find my way across this uh, water feature. Can we get down there? Yeah. Oh. I'm in the stream. Okay, that uh, wasn't quite uh, as good as I was hoping, but um, I'm not totally soaked. What do you think, Tilly? Do you think we could have handled that slope a bit better there? Quite possibly. Right. So the only problem with working in a woodland that uh, doesn't actually have any paths in it or anything official is you're, you're basically relying on reading where maybe something like the badgers have been as your, as your route through the undergrowth. Constantly having to look for the widow makers as well. There you go, something's been through here. There we go. Ah, there it is. Welcome to the area which is soon to be the new HBB camp. So today, it's my intention, is to take you guys through showing you a couple of different pot hangers or methods of suspending a pot over a campfire um, using natural cordage and using something called a withy. Now, I did a video a little while ago about withies, so make sure you check that out. Without further ado, we're gonna head off back into the forest. Now we've reached camp and we've checked that everything's okay here. We're gonna head off back into the forest and go source the relevant materials to go ahead and make these pot hangers. So what I'm looking for is a very specific pattern of growth that occurs naturally within most small diameter trees when they're, they've been coppiced before and you get this specific forking because that's gonna give me the shapes I need to make this clever pot hanger that swings combined with the natural cordage to hold it together. It's a bit of a minefield looking for it. Now for me, the art of bushcraft is being able to forage materials from the wider surroundings. It's not necessarily all about equipment. Having the right gear is essential, but, um, but having the knowledge obviously weighs nothing and you can you carry that with you, you know, the world over. You can apply these techniques to many different... Just look at that. Ooh. <laughs> this is why you've got to have your wits about you, because this place is literally... Can we get this one down? This place can be lethal. So what's this one here about? See this fork? I mean, that's just a little bit small, but it's got the primary fork that I'm after. So I would cut this off about here and the pot would hang on this end. And then it's got that secondary fork and then a straight bit. That's not really what I'm after. Ah, hello. This looks good. Okay, so this is a lone, this is a lone hazel. What it's got is that good strong primary fork. It's not, it's not overly large in diameter. And it has a secondary fork here. And what I'll be hoping for is another little fork up here somewhere. That is pretty tiny, but do you know what it might just do? That's my best bet so far. I'm not gonna go ahead and cut it. I'm gonna keep looking. Here's a familiar face. And you can see how that withy has, uh, has returned from being green back into, uh, into a like, hard woody cordage. And this was the one that we made the other week. So what I'm liking about using this technique today is that because there is so much hazel here that's in, in poor disarray where these once coppice stools stood really straight and true and a lot of them have just fallen over now and they're actually light suppressing the forest floor. So if I can do anything craft-wise by tidying some of this horizontal growth up, I'm probably doing it a bit of a favor. Now, 
I've just interestingly, my eye has fallen upon this, this strong forking going on here, this interesting curve, and the fact that we have another fork in here and a good strong straight piece running away from it. And this really is the beauty of this stuff, is it's all experimentation and you can be as creative as you like. We're gonna have a go at this now and uh, I'm gonna choose a nice straight rod somewhere with a good fork in it to get me started. Uh, that's gonna get banged into the ground. We're gonna take all this stuff back over to main camp and, uh, and then we're gonna have a play from there. And now the crucial cut. I'm gonna take more than I actually need. I'm gonna take it off right up to here. And I think I might, if I'm really lucky, be able to get the other piece I need out of this end. Let's take our prize back to main camp. The first thing I'm gonna to need to do is tidy up the end. Okay, and make this a little bit smaller. Doesn't have to be that big. So what I'm trying to gauge, guys, is I need to cut this piece off somewhere along here. This is gonna be the straight piece that goes into the ground that hopefully sticks in around here somewhere and comes up and meets this in a straight line. I need to cut it correctly, because if I don't, we'll end up on a wonk hitting the floor just above or just below. So it really probably wants to be, if you think about the height of your pot, it wants to be sort of here, so that you can swing it in and out of the way of the fire. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna make the most of this nice big long piece here and this tight forking, which is of course the reason I felled this in the first place. So I'm gonna try and have it off up here somewhere I think is sensible. And a sort of matching distance the other side, something like that there. Hopefully it's all going to start to make sense. I've got my upright here. This is going to get cut down. I'm going to turn the bottom into a point and drive that into the ground. And then these two are going to fit into each other as such. Okay. As you can see at the moment, it's limited at the top as to where it can swing. All I'm going to do is make a natural cordage to create the join between these two here. So now that I've got the main part of the swinging crane and my upright or my staff or my pole, which is gonna be act as the main support for this thing, I'm gonna to need to go ahead and make my natural cordage and that's gonna be a withy. I'm on the hunt for some uh, hazel, which is a um, native species to the British Isles. And I'm looking for some really thin whippy growth here which can be turned into quick cordage. Okay. Something like this, look at this. Long, straight, whippy rod, all the way up to the end there. That would make quite a lot of cordage. Just gonna give it a turn to see whether it'll... Okay, okay, I think this is gonna play ball. So my first thing I need to do is take off any growth. And I'm gonna go right up to the end here and I'm gonna have this off at this uh, little fork. Good sharp knife is always helpful. Okay, and so I'm gonna use this little fork as a handle to start cranking down on. And the secret to this technique is to make sure you keep tension, okay, pulling towards yourself, as you keep tension and make sure that you keep pulling away on the base. You can see there's new growth coming through here, so I'll just double check in, I'm happy. So I'm just gonna start to twist and turn this. Now this requires quite a lot of wrist strength. It doesn't always go to plan, because you are working with natural fibers. 
Ah, there we go, I heard that. And what you're trying to do is break this free of the sheath in which it grows. You can actually see those fibres. So I'm breaking them free. There we go. And as soon as it wants to kind of turn on itself, okay, that tells me that I've got enough there to go underneath. That then becomes part of my handle. Make sure you keep the tension on away from the stool and just keep cranking around. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole thing. Okay, is that ready to turn on itself? Yep. Let's just keep going. Now there's a number of small whippy trees like this that will do this. But here in the UK and British Isles, the hazel really is number one, I'd say, for, for making withies. You can hear it splitting all the way along as it breaks free. It's like fiber optic cable. So this is quick and easy rope for me. I haven't got to process down any plant fibers. I don't have to wait anything to dry out overnight. I don't have to do any complicated braiding, plaiting, splicing. I just literally twist and go. Oh, we nearly snapped that one. It's getting trickier. It might snap at any point, guys. But we've got loads of cordage at this one, which is good. <sighs> Mister on fire, yep, it's gone. And that sometimes happens. So don't worry about it. If it does go and it goes down low like that, it's not the end of the world. I can actually see, looking down inside it, I think there's a bit of fungus happening. Yeah, there is, look, that's what's done it. It's got a bit of damage. That is where the deer have been rubbing. Previously, this one's been um, rubbed by a deer. If you look closely, fear not, because there's some growth on here. So if I cut this just above here, it's got a chance of coming back nice and strong. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Then we're going to take our withy, our natural cordage. Okay, we're going to take this back over to where we're working. Where is it? Over there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and throw this pot hanger together. Good times. So I'm going to go ahead and take off way more than I need. So I reckon I'm going to go with something like this. And then I might be able to use this later on for something else. So we'll just put it to one side. Now in the absence of being able to maybe hold this great big long stick in one hand and sharpen the end of it. What I'm going to do is go ahead and use the side of this little tree here, this little piece of growth as a jam, to jam that in. Okay, so now I'm working at chest height. I'm not having to do anything difficult. You take a look. Okay, so now I've just got it here perfectly held underneath my armpit and it's jammed into the tree. Okay, so this is quite tough, so I'm going to change position because it's a medium to hardwood. I'm going to put the knife here in my hand. I'm going to come over and I'm going to give it the chicken wing. If you want an example of that, um, check out some of our other videos. I think the tent pegs one has me giving it the chicken wing. I'll just chamfer these over. Using my thumb on the hand that's holding the wood to just push on the spine of the knife and drive those bits off. Say for argument's sake, this is going to be the fire here somewhere. I need to drive this in. Okay, same thing again then. Okay, now, when I offer that up, does that sit against there? Will that swing nicely in there? Yes. Does that height look about right? Level with the fork? Yes. Does the picture out this way look like that will swing nicely and suspend the pot, yes. Okay, at this point, we have something workable. Now comes the tricky part, attaching the cordage, attaching the cordage from here up onto the fork. Have you just taken my cordage? Come here. Stop chewing it. Just go ahead and unwind the whole lot. So to begin with, I'm gonna find the midway point. And I'm going to tuck this right up underneath there, tightly, and I'm going to cross it over. And it's going to cross back over that one. And then this one's going to come over and cross back over this one. 
and then we're going to go underneath this time and then we're going to come back round and then we're going to go back over around that one so what I'm basically doing guys is making a bit of a figure of eight okay, and this one can come back round a whole lot in fact I think got lots of swing on there that's nice but don't worry if it doesn't look exactly perfectly symmetrical as long as it does what it's supposed to okay now how does that sit and does it swing yes it does it swings rather marvelously okay I'm just making a crisscross style fire to begin with, just so I can get a good quick bed of uh, ashes going. Of course, I'm creating that thermal column and everything is just pulling straight up through. Okay, so the fire is now going underneath my, uh, my fancy little pot hanger, which of course I can swing out of the way. Um, and then I can go ahead and put some notches, or put a notch into the back here, which the uh, the, either the paracord or the rope or the whatever I'm using to suspend my uh, my pot over the top will will of course bite into. Now, if you guys are using one of these Nalgene bottles, there's a bit of a nifty trick to get this off because of course this top is all plastic and you really don't want to get that into any trouble. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to uh, how to take this off right now. And then inside we should have our humble fish spreader. So let's place the fish spreader down to one side with the lighter. Now, all you're going to do here is, as you can see, you can see that this runs, forget the lid, you see that this runs around the outside edge here. So what you're going to do is you're going to go and take your knife, lay the bottle down, and with your finger, pin one side so it can't move anywhere, then turn the knife over and just gently drag and it should you've only got to create enough that it pulls itself through like that can you see that so i've just dragged some of that through perfect so now what should happen is i should be able to just pop this off like so of course once i've done that i'm now going to go ahead and i could fill this with water Stick my uh, fish spreaders on the inside, okay, and then all I need is a tiny little paracord loop or something, and I can just fit that underneath here and swing that around. Keep that clean. I'm almost always carrying a little bit of shoelace in my pocket or something like that, so I'll just use that to make a simple loop to hook through there and onto here. You could carve this down to the diameter and slide this over the top if you really wanted to. So it probably goes without saying that all I'm going to do here is put in a stop cut and make a little bit of an underhang. Same sketch as before. I'm going to roll in a stop cut uh, and I could do that, I mean maybe I could do two actually, I could kind of do one here or one here. Let's just see where the heat of the fire is pretty much over the end. But the fact that there's a knot here means it's a real strong point. So I'm gonna work with that. And it's only got to be enough that the lace or whatever I use, the bit of cordage bites onto it. Here we go. Oh yeah. Lush Spanish chorizo sausage. I'm going to cut some pieces, put it on a stick and just literally roast it over the fire. It's a lovely little treat. And whilst that's happening, we're going to get that filled up to start heating some water for a cup of natural tea. You guys may remember from earlier, we had this Y. All I'm going to do is take these two bits off, put a point on either one, and my chorizo sausage, once I've taken the skin off, is going to sit on there like that. And I'm just going to hold that and roast that over the fire until it's ready to eat. So 
So this, the rose petal cut comes in handy again. Where I'm just going to keep pushing and turning with the belly of the blade. So push, turn, push, turn, push, turn, push, turn. Push, turn, same thing. Until I get up underneath here. This one's kind of tricky. And then I should be able to snap that off. That looks like the end of a rose inside there. And sharpen this up. Oh, camera's jumping. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same to this one here. This is pretty straightforward. You can see it comes like that. And all I'm going to do is fix this at two points and hold this over the fire. First, I've got to take the skin off. Okay guys, so all I've done is I've put this on, um, put this on my two prong stick. Typical, the fire now comes around to get me. <laughs> Might have to change the angle. But all I'm going to do is while my water's boiling, is I'm going to start to roast this and uh, just going to make it nice and nice and cooked on the outside edge and I'm going to really enjoy this high calorie massive uh, masses of return on this. Now the only problem is with this is it makes you incredibly thirsty but as a little treat I don't think there's anything wrong with that every now and again. <laughs> just look at that. Oh that is going to be it's going to be red hot for sure. Oh my god. I'm going to give some to Tilly, don't worry. But first, that is just glorious. We'll just cut a little piece off here, just for Tilly. Oh, you, you, look at that tail. I'll just grab this off. Let that cool for a minute. Just one more point before I go. Guys, remember that to take time for yourselves, however you do it, is down to you. But for me, it's as simple as this. It's as simple as coming out, you know, spending time in the great outdoors, crafting, making something, using my creative side of my brain to, to, to create or make something, fashion something from the natural world. Reward yourself. You work harder than you think, okay? So I'll give myself a great big chorizo sausage and a lovely cup of what will be probably a sachet of coffee.